friend We thought they'd never end We'd sing and dance forever and a day We'd live the life we choose We'd fight and never lose For we were young and sure to have our way La 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 Those were the days Oh yes, those were the days I decided I would immigrate. And at that time, it only cost 10 pounds, you know, like $20. And I was getting seven pounds a week, so it'd be one and a half weeks pay. You can travel to either um, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or South Africa. And I figured that um, too much bother in South Africa. Canada, I figured, was too cold in the, in the winter. And I'd like to have gone to Australia, but there was quite a stigma attached to, it, to Australians with the, um, with the convict thing. And I settled on New Zealand, and not the least was the fact that there was the opportunity to get on because people could become share milkers. So I settled on that. That was in 1915, I was 20 then. So it was quite an eventful year because I got married in that year. So we set sail on this boat, the Tamara from Southampton. I had to bribe the um, shipping clerk because there was a waiting list of nearly a year to get on the boat. I don't remember, it would have been peanuts. And he got us on fairly quickly. And then landed on um, Labor Day in Auckland. My first restaurant meal over here was colossal. It was just steak and chips and filled up the plate. I've never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> steak and chips. Um, because what it meant was you would know meat was very scarce and then went through the, through the war. So anyway, by Tuesday or whatever, I got my luggage and thought, oh, I'll, I'll go and see this farmer in, outside Wangarei for my interview. So I go around the corner and, and asked the taxi to take me to Wangarei. Anyway, he's soon in like me. <laughs> Probably he's 85 miles or something like that. We went up in a little plane at the interview and decided to take the job. So the job, uh, that job was seven pounds. Stayed with him for the season. There was one car, one farmer had a car. Nobody else did. I'd never seen a fridge or a washing machine. I didn't even know they existed until I came to New Zealand. And I'd never seen a TV, although I knew they existed. But I'd never seen one. But over here, they were just, to a penny, everybody had a TVs, fridges, washing machines. And I think actually New Zealand in that respect is very, very well advanced. Tell me, where did you meet Jody? I was in Featherston and Jordan was in Nanai and I met her when Tim was four. That was at a solo parents do. And then we continued to meet over the next two or three years, I think it was. And then we decided we would get married. So I would I would have met her just before Wahini Day. Well I met her before Decimal Coin actually, I can remember that. It would be about sixty seven I think. And so we moved into town into New Plymouth and the house we're in now. And that would be nineteen seventy. I see trees of green, red roses too, I see them bloom for me and for you, and I think to myself, What a wonderful world I see skies of blue Clouds of white A bright blessed day A dark sacred night And I think to myself what a wonderful world. 
Jodi, she started to teach when we were at Warrior. She went back to teaching. I've just stayed with it ever since. She's at Marfell now, and I think she enjoys the job. I left farming and went to work for a stamp dealer and stayed there for 10 years. I gave him three months' notice, and I thought I would set up on my own at home. It keeps me occupied and brings in a certain amount of income. Not a great deal, but there's a, there's a certain amount. Gives me something to do, and I'll in fact do it until I die. I'm, I'll never retire. I'll, I'll just treat it as a um, as a hobby, and I like wining and dining, so that would be another hobby of mine, so to speak. So I can do that and cast it as a business. We get around New Zealand a bit, and I'm very fond of travelling. I think five. <laughs> five with Barbara, four with Phil and the second wife, none with Geordie for obvious reasons, but she brought four. So that meant 13. Of that, there was usually seven to nine at home at any one time. For my 60th birthday, most of them came here, and one of them, O'Brien from Wakatani, he decided to go out there in the room and ask if any of us had been on drugs, and it was quite interesting. Uh, m most of them had, and I think most of them had only done it once. And when they got the job in me, I think they were a bit amused because, no, we hadn't, nor did we know where to get the job started from. <laughs> Looking back, I think I've had a very, very good life. Been very, very fortunate. And now the end is near, and so I face. The final curtain My friend I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived A life that's full I've traveled each And every highway And more more than this, I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has. 